Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Today it's going to be a Masters versus GM level game sent to me at falconpaladin at gmail.com. Or, hmm, maybe it was uploaded to the Discord server and they submit a replay channel. Anyway, it's going to be Milka versus Barcode here on Automaton the Ladder Edition. This is going to be a special Patreon cast for those of you who support me on Patreon for $1 a month or more. And the person who sent me this, I asked him if it's okay for me to do this, and he said, mm, why not make it exclusive for patrons? And then after like three weeks or so, just put it on the YouTube channel. And I was like, huh, maybe that will work. Let me know in the comments of this video or on the comments of this post of patreon.com. And let's talk about it. All right, so we have... The Red Terran player on the bottom leftish of Automaton. It is the Red Terran player. He's barcode. And in the top right hand corner, the Blue Protoss player, Milka. All right, man. So one of these is GM. One of these is Masters. If we uh, if we take a look at APMs here, it looks like the Protoss has a 130 APM. There's 89 here for the Terran. That doesn't really help us. I really don't think uh, those APMs are really necessarily congruent with really GM level stuff in general anyway. Got to be at least 200, right? To say for sure it's GM. There are plenty of players who play slower. It's not a problem. As that probe does chase the SCV off, but the SCV is done building the barracks and the Reaper's on the way. The Reaper's name is Yugi Moto. Yugi was ready to du -du 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 duel in the Terran Intergalactic Duel Monster Tournament. In the first game, Yugi played Pot of Greed, which allowed Yugi to draw two cards from his deck. However, Pot of Greed had been banned from tournament play for centuries for cheating in a children's card game. Yugi was sent to the Reaper program. Oh, Yugi Moto. Rough times had by all. I hadn't watched any Yu-Gi-Oh! until my kids found it on Netflix a couple years ago, and they like it a lot. My daughter especially really likes uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! And yeah, man, I mean, that show, it's, uh, it really makes playing a card game look interesting. I'll give them that. But what's more interesting is how every single time it was like Yugi's losing and then there's a speech about the heart of the cards and the power of friendship. And then he draws the card that means Yugi wins and if you're not Yugi, you get wrecked. It's, I mean, it's the same thing every time, but I guess watching the heroes win in a repetitious manner is something people like and kids like especially. And that's what Yu-Gi-Oh is. I feel like it's inferior to Pokemon. Pokemon's a little bit more varied than what it does. Anyway, Yugi. Running around here, Stalker gonna shoo him away before he gets any kills. KD8 charge does blow the Stalker away, so no additional shots can be had on the Reaper. That's pretty good control there out of the Terran player. Is he our mystery GM? Is he the Grandmaster player that we've all been waiting for? Maybe. Maybe he is. Twilight Council in production by Milka. And I just... Milk... It just reminds me of Milk. I love Milk. Did I tell you the story of when I spent two years out of the country in a place where they don't really do milk very well? Like, they have cows, but it's different. And as soon as I came home, the first thing I did, I went to my fridge, I opened it, I got a gallon of milk out of the fridge, drank the whole, oh, not drank the whole thing, poured a huge glass, and drank the whole thing, and I was so happy. Ah, so pleased. All right, man, enough jabbering, Falcon. What's going on in this game? Ah, uh, looks like we're going Blink Stalker from Milka. Looks like our barcode player down here is going for Marines. He's getting stim. He's got a bunker at the front. He's really SCVing hard right now. He's sitting at 28 workers to 34 compared to the Protoss. Corner boost is good, but mules are also pretty great as our income is actually favoring the Terran player right now despite the fact that he's down six workers. That's how it works, man. That is the balance that is in this game. Hurrah! Robotics facility in production from Milka here too inside the natural base. He's spreading his tech, which is something that it's hard to remember to do but it really helps if your main gets dropped and you lose everything, you can still make stuff because you actually have other tech structures and building structures elsewhere. It's very nice, actually. All right, man. I don't I mean, Barco doesn't have anything. He's got a handful of Marines preparing for Oracle, but there are not any of those. He's ready anyway. That's fine. And our friendly neighborhood Yugi down here, not doing much of anything either. Just kind of hanging out. So we've got Stim here, we've got Combat Shield here, Stim, or rather Blink is just about done. Is there a Warp Prism? Did I see a Warp Prism? I saw that I saw a Warp Prism. And no, it's an Observer. Hmm, I'd like to see a Warp Prism with Blink Stalkers. It's really good to be able to get that high ground vision and warp in reinforcements. That's what we see the professional Protoss players do quite a bit. Especially in these Blink Stalker openings versus Terran. 
But Milka going for the earlier attack. He's got Blink, but there's no support here. That is a lot of Marines and Marauders, man. Even if you're Blink, I don't know about this. Yeah, you blink, you just blink away. You can't win a fight against this much bio. Stalkers are inherently horrible versus this much bio, especially if there are Marauders in the group. Marauders just tear through Stalkers like they're made of tissue paper. And sure, you can blink back. The blinking is pretty good. I mean, they're trading out some S uh, some Marines just for some hull damage. I don't think any Stalkers have died yet in this game. Uh, nope. Uh, actually, no Marines have died either. Are you kidding? Just the Reaper. They just target fired down Yugi. Oh no, these Marines did do get a Stalker, but they recognize they're dead otherwise. And this this blink control by Milka is pretty good. I gotta say, Milka might be our guy. APM 194 on average now. Yeah, I mean, when there's stuff to do, close to 200 APM is pretty nice. So I'm gonna put my money on Milka being the GM player, Barco down here being our, uh, our Masters guy, and I don't know, we'll see if we can pull it off, I guess. All right, where are we? We are working on Immortals, getting Charge for Milka. These are upgrades you really got to get against Terran. Charge lots really soak up a ton of that damage this bio does. Allow Stalkers to actually do damage without dying. Uh, also allows Colossus to sit back and do damage too. So Zealots in general are just really great buffers versus a bio Terran player. And a Terran player is never going to go mech against you because Immortals are really great. So if you know how to play against bio Terran, you're pretty much fine. Although, Battlecruiser Rush can be a thing. Battlecruiser getting in the mix can be a thing too. So you got to watch out for that. We've seen battle cruisers being used fairly effectively in this matchup recently. All right, man. Uh, Barco here is trying to spend his money. He's making additional barracks right now. Two barracks working on plus one infantry armor. The observer in observation mode, hanging out, seeing exactly what's coming in here from the Protoss or the Terran player. Protoss is on three bases, where our Terran player is sitting on exactly two. He's oversaturated on his natural light, crazy. Undersaturated on his main, surprisingly enough. And really showing, there you go, showing sign of going for that third. A little bit late, but I think it's going to be okay for him. Again, mules are fantastic. He has the worker count to saturate it immediately. He needs to take these SCVs and just, there you go, manor them right over. And actually fully saturating his main here, too. So that's pretty good stuff. That is some pretty good control. Observer scouts it. Sees mm -hmm, mm -hmm, good saturation count. Army supply can't be too huge, and it's not. It's 51 to 54 in favor of the Protoss, or the Terran right now. Bit of an accidental engagement here, and yeah. Milka was moving out at the same time that Barcode was. They met in the middle. I think some damage was exchanged. A couple Marines dying here. No Stalkers going down. The control, again, is pretty great out of our Protoss player. Oh! Losing one stalker, and here come the zealots. Oh, the force fields are good too. Catching a few marines there when they should have been able to retreat. Where are your medevacs, friend? Or do you have any medevacs at all? Yes, there are two, and there are two more on the way. There we go. Let's go ahead and augment this army with some medevacs, please. It is. It hurts my soul to see a Terran bio army with no medevacs. It, it's good for early aggression. But eventually, you want these uh, these friendly, helpful medevacs to heal you back up to 100%. My brain is so stuck on the friendly neighborhood line. I've said it so many times this week. I gotta stop. It's just, it's a Spider-Man thing. And I've been talking a lot about Into the Spider-Verse and the upcoming Spider-Man movie. Uh, Away From Home, I believe it's called. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Two full medevacs sniped there. I mean, sure, some marauders unloaded and did some stuff, but that's brutal. Resources lost here. Yeah, 2,400 for barcode, 1,300 for Milka. That's not good. That is not good. Terran player still fighting anyway. He's finding it within the heart of the cards to get a win. He's got plus one, plus one. He's got stim. He's got combat shield. He's going to... This base needs to be canceled. There it is. No fourth for you. And this going to unload inside the main and flee with the rest of his army. I kind of like this. The Stalkers that blink up here can't handle this army, especially not with medevac support. The Stalkers are chanting and fighting, kind of. But the probes are entirely getting evacuated from here. That pylon is not powering literally anything. Widowmine gets a shot. Oh, I think he blinked it. I think he blinked out of it, which is pretty nice. Ah, well, here we go. This Zealot Colossus thing is kind of going to be the nemesis here for Barcode. He's retreating from it. Running for his little Terran life right now. These guys are kind of hanging around. like They want to go back in for the drop. But Milka's leaving some of his army home to defend against that. So he should be fine in the long run.
Milka's working on Storm, so he's not just happy and content to sit here with Colossus. He wants some more splash damage versus these Marines and these Marauders. Still no fourth base. Barcode is actually working on a fourth. He's producing it here inside his main where to save Army Supply 111 and 90. Upgrade's gonna be still that plus one, plus one. Plus two attack is on the way. Plus two armor is also on the way here for this bio. And the Protoss player is happily sitting on plus two, plus one, where the plus two is the armor. And the plus two attack is on the way. He's trying to drop up in the main while pushing on this fourth. And it's gonna work. I think that, oh, actually, you know, splitting his army pretty effectively now is Milka. And I think the Terran's gonna be rebuffed in both situations. That full medevac, oh my gosh, another one gets taken out. I mean, this is medevacs that have been killed. Yes, three of them, but all of them have had units inside too, and good numbers in two of those cases. Brutal, brutal stuff. Barcode is working on a fusion core, which could indicate battle cruisers, could indicate just going for advanced ballistics, allowing the Liberator range to be improved. Got some Marauders fighting up here at the third base for Bar or for Milka. Doesn't actually do anything there. This Observer has just been having the greatest day of his life, man. He's observed so many things and reported back home to what's going on. That's some pretty brutal stuff for Barcode. I mean, you gotta scan for these. Every once in a while, you gotta scan for these Observers. You can see them. Just a bit of a shimmer there. Anyway, ah, the third base! Milka's gonna lose the third out of position a little bit. A bunch of Zealots gonna die here, too. Resources lost 5,000 to 4,000. In favor of the Terran at this stage, or in favor, rather, of the Protoss at this stage, but these bases getting killed is a problematic. Another attack, splitting his forces so very, very well. Barco takes down his second Nexus in what feels like five seconds there. That was very, very fast for him. He's trying to drop back in again. Maybe force to cancel on that base that is, was immediately replaced, by the way. And being long distance mining, mining from here. So man, Barcode happily sitting on four bases. He sniped a couple Nexuses so far. Very nicely done. Milka is kind of stuck on two base, which is not where he wants to be, especially since he's almost mined out of his main. He's got 72 workers, but he's oversaturating or long distance mining like crazy. To try to make this work, to try to be as efficient as possible. Medivac's healing up these veterans of the battles that we just experienced across the map. Plus three armor on the way for Milka's ground units. Plus three attack on the way for Barcode's ground units. And it is Battlecruiser! Holy crap! Holy cannoli! It is definitely Battlecruiser here. And that's going to be interesting. That's going to be interesting for sure. High Templar in production for Milka. I haven't seen many storms, but they're definitely going to play a part here for the rest of the game. Storms just generally, that's how that works. All right, man. Liberator sneaking on up. We've got Marines and Marauders. And there's a jump. There's a jump to the back of the natural. I think this catches Milka by surprise. Bah, bah, bah. Immediately getting a couple probes there. Three probes go down. And Liberator setting up. I think Milk is a little bit, ah, a little bit distracted by this battle cruiser. He's sending some stalkers home to deal with it, and yeah, it's gonna die. Because stalkers versus battle cruisers are not really a fair fight, especially if the stalkers have plus two attack. Another attack coming on in, and yeah, just no, Milka wants nothing to do with it, he's pulling back, he's got Guardian Shield up just in case there's Pursuit. The Observer is just, like, is this the same Observer? I think it's the same one. Honestly, incredible stuff. Disruptor in production here for Milka. And trying to, uh, just dodging, man. This is a lot of what high level TVP is, is dodging nice. EMP on that high template. Do you get some feedbacks down too? I want to see. I heard some feedback. I don't know if these ghosts got feedbacked or what. Where are you, my ghosts? Here's one. That's yeah, got a lot of energy. Maybe not a feedback after all. Stalkers trying to fight before the circles come up. Doesn't go that well for them. The Liberator circles are playing huge parts right now for Barcode. Disruptor is getting some Novas off. 
exploding a little bit there, not really doing much of anything. The ghosts are just kind of in command here. Dude, he wants to chase down these. Oh, he's going to get the EMPs. The EMPs on the High Templar. That was huge. That was massive. These High Templar are still around, and they still have a ton of HP, and these ghosts pay for that EMP with their lives. These ghosts overextending a little bit here, too. Got to be careful with those spellcasters. They're good, but they are squishy. All right, man. Stalkers trying to get shots off on those Liberators before they set up in defender mode. If at all they can. Oh, some Archons merging on in here. The surround is not looking good at all for Barcode. The storm's coming down. He's dealt with the army on the right side, but the top side and the left side are still attacking him. The storms are blanketing this Terran army. Everybody is overstimmed. The Colossus is crushing through. Stalkers fighting here as well, and Barcode loses that fight fairly handily. That was just nice positioning by Milka for sure. Great storms everywhere. Resources lost here. 16,000 and 16,000. It's evening up, boys. It is evening up for sure. Milka has managed to replace his fourth, replace his third, and he's taking a fifth. Or he's taken a fifth along the right side. Looks like, yeah, man, Barco's going for a fifth base of his own. At the 6 o'clock position, 81 to 76 workers. Milka may have overmade probes just a little bit, but we will see. He's going for a Dark Shrine. Uh, maybe for Archons, maybe for Dark Templar. And Milka actually expanding down this right side for a 7th. Right next door to our barcode is setting up home. That is kind of hilarious. Milka dancing about. He's getting scanned. He knows. There's sensor towers. Disruptors trying to get shots off. The Novas don't really do much of anything at all. Plus three attack on the way from Milka, too. All right. Uh, Milka, he's just doing the dance. He's sending Novas out, trying to catch units. The Liberators are just... My gosh, the range. The range on the Liberators is so very, very good here. Army supply 92 to 82 in favor of a barcode. Sneaking down. More stalkers are here. The upgrades are pretty fantastic. Plus three, plus two, plus one for Milka with plus three almost done on that attack. So it's going to be a plus three, plus three free ghost. Never say die. <laughs> Never say die, he says after he dies. Planetary Fortress is trying to hold on here. Ghost throwing down some EMPs. Oh, the Nova's getting dodged. What pearl level dodging there. Out of barcode. Thank you very much. EMPs on those stalkers means they're so squishy versus this bio. Yep. Nova catches some things, but goes right past some of those ghosts. Really hard to control. Liberator's getting... Oh, the circles are huge right now. The Stalkers are trying to turn and fight. No, they blink out of there. They blink out of there. Milka trying to be the aggressor here. More EMPs tossed down, taking off some of those shields on those Archons. That's really a good spell to be using consistently at this stage. Holy crap, it's DT Blink. Milka's going for Shadow Stride. Oh my gosh. Trying to take down the sixth, seventh base, but wow, the Colossus tearing on in. The EMPs on the High Templar, though. And that actually chases Milka off. That makes him back off. The EMPs are great. It looks like the Nexus is going to die. There are enough Marauders here with plus three attack to shut those suckers down. And the Nexus does end up falling here to the combined might of this bio. Milka, pretty big army. Just, again, he's not quite sure he wants to engage. The Liberator count is too high. These are just observers. I keep thinking these are engagements, but they're not. Sixth base landing now for Barcode at the gold. Come, no, just come this way, you sillies. All right, that's fair, I guess. Nice revelation toss down. Just, you know, information is good. Yeah, decent Novas. They're not incredible, though. Oh, Disruptor catches it. Disruptor's man alive. Just whoop-bam. Liberator shots huge right here. Backing Milka into a corner. Feedbacks going down. I heard those ones for sure. I'm not, what are they even getting tossed down on? It's got to be the ghosts, right? I don't know. Tempests are mixing into the group here just to deal with this huge number of Liberators. But man, look at this. These the zealots are warping and getting killed. Another EMP. Uh, just amazing stuff. The Tempest abusing the fact they can go into the high ground. They're running from the ground area right now. Oh, that Nexus is dead. If there's a, this much bio with plus three, with Stim, with Metavax, that Nexus is gone. So Milka expanding to the top side here, but losing another Nexus. Two of them in quick succession once a more. Four Nexuses have gone down. Barcode has not lost a base yet. 
Oh, what a match this is. I am losing my voice here. Oh, Free Tempest is bad. Don't do Free Tempest. Why are you coming out here? The Vikings are just like, Brock. No big deal. Uh, these Colossus are in trouble too. Well, I don't know. The Stalker count's kind of high down there. The Storm's pretty intimidating as well. Milk has taken a gold base for himself. So he is... Man, he's replacing Nexus's like a pro. He isn't bothered with this in the bottom right, but he's expanding. He's happily sitting on six, seven bases again. Almost seven bases again. He's expanding really, really well. And his control's been pretty great, too. So he's got the Stalkers. He's got the Storm. He's got the Archons in the mix. I don't know if he has any High Templar in this mix, actually. That's kind of a problem. There they are. They were just lagging a little bit behind here. Mm, is this base in trouble? Is the question. Planetary Fortress can kind of hold in these situations. Yeah, man. Flanking around the outside. And yeah, these Colossus get wrecked. Beautiful storm. Hitting a lot of that bio, though. The Liberators. Man, barcode is so, so fast on that Defender Mode Advantage hotkey. I don't even know what it is. When I say advantage, I just mean Defender Mode hotkey. That's all it is here. He keeps picking off Tempests from distance. They have upgrades at all. There are... Oh, here are the DTs. And here is the Shadow Stride. And... Oh, he scanned them. Chased them out. They blinked out. That's what you got to do. What you got to do with the DTs is you got to blink out... Oh, the EMP reveals the Dark Templar. Revealed the Dark Templar. Not something you see every day. And they all get killed. What a response there from Barcode. Fantastic play by him. Just revealing the DTs with the EMP. And then wrecking them before they can come back around for another go. Because that's how this works against Terran, is you attack into them and then blink out when the scan comes in. Another Nexus at the gold base getting focused down. I don't know if this army can get out of here. The defender mode is actually defending this position wherein they can take the Nexus down. That was a great play out of barcode there. Tempest trying to fight. I mean, it's 118 to 99 army supply. 197 to 177. <gasps> oh! Templar gets a storm off and manages to survive, too. I'm very surprised by this. Man, anytime the circles come in, Milk is like, I'm out. I am out. Thank you for thinking of me. But I am gone, man. These Tempests just getting rocked by Vikings from all over the place. There are plus two Vikings, by the way. I don't think there's any air attack at all for the Tempest. No, there are definitely not whatsoever. Expanding in the bottom right now is Barcode. He's at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's got seven bases of his own right now. Working on air weapons level one, recognizing how important the Tempest are to dealing with these Liberators. Although the Viking count again has been kind of insane. I don't know if that's what you want to do here or not. Oh, we're going to go more EMPs, more EMPs all over this. No, Nova, beautiful Nova. Amazing Nova. Great storms here too. The defender mode circles catching so much bio. The Zealots just aren't doing much at all. Ooh, a free High Templar there as well. Resources lost 40,000 for Milka and 27,000 for Barcode. A flank attack here of the Protoss forces getting on top of this. The Defender Mode and the Liberators are fighting as best they can. There are DTs in the mix. There are Zealots in the mix here too. Popping out. The Stalkers are trying to deal with the Liberators. Forced to pick up and get the heck on out of there. Did anybody get picked up? I don't think they did. Those are empty medevacs coming home. And suddenly it's 79 to 70. Nope, 72 to 71 army supply. It is so dang close right now. I love that Milka is long distance mining from this seventh base that Barcode has. That is hilarious to me. Single DT warping in to deal with this. If this was a planetary fortress, it'd be a different story. You wouldn't be able to wipe it out here with a single DT. Milka setting up with a gateway army. I mean, that is Zealots and that is Stalkers is all it is right now. More TTs coming in. That's a lift. That is a lift, my friend. And there it is. There's your lift. That's why you gotta make planetary fortresses, bro. So one DT can't wreck it. Another engagement over here. Well, are we surprised by the number of defender mode circles? We are not. Milka trying to do what damage he can versus these add-ons is not really working out. Another Nova dodged ably there. Out of barcode, but forced to lift off on his 7th base entirely. And look at this. Milka happily replacing his gold base happily mining on several bases i don't know that barcode does know about that one see the planetary fortress makes all the difference in the world when dts show up to try to wreck the day but again attacking on in nova's trying to deal oh, they catch a viking i think a couple vikings there ghost getting exploded but the defender mode circle is covering this ramp very very nicely i <laughs> I'm trying to hold on. I'm trying to hold on, you guys. This game has been insane. 
insane game. All right, long distance mining probes getting killed. That counts for something. 49 workers killed by barcode and only five killed by Milko. That's insane. That is so many dead workers, but guess, I mean, it's still 68 for Milka. This base on the right side gonna get wrecked. That's another Nexus down for Barcode. Are we keeping track at home? We are, and this is number six. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I think Milka has the right idea. The Tempest to deal with the Liberators, he just doesn't have enough at any given time. He's got five right now, and he's lost ten. The problem is the Vikings are just seeking them out from long range, and there are enough Vikings to where they get wrecked pretty fast. Oh, there's only three, though. Hmm. There's only three. The Tempest might do more damage. DT's wandering into another base that is yet not another planetary fortress on the top left side. Nova catches a Marine. The splits by Barcode have been insane versus these Novas, you guys. DT's, there we go, getting some revenge on their dead pro brethren. Actually using Liberators versus the Tempest, which I don't know is a great idea. But then they set up in Defender Mode, and they do end up picking up a Disruptor. That's amazing. It's exactly what you want here. The Storm's trying to prevent the chase right now. Barcode smells blood in the water. He's pursuing farther than he has, I think, in this entire game. But the Zealot Warpin is incredible. The Stalker Warpin is really good here, too. The Liberators are fighting against Tempest. I don't think they should be. Yeah, man, the Liberators will all die. There's still a Tempest remaining here, and Barco decides it's time to get the heck on out. He's retreating from this position. The DTs are chasing him with their Shadow Stride, and everybody's dead. All right, so, hmm, 70 to 54 army. Milka has a giant lead. It's 13 Marines, a Marauder, a Liberator, and a Ghost for Barcode. For two Colossus, seven DTs, and 17 Stalkers for Milka. I gotta say, this is a better composition for Milka. Losing all those Liberators was a problem for Barcode. It was a huge problem for him, but again, he's fighting up a rank here. He's fighting against GM, and he's Masters. Based on, again, the APM numbers, which, yeah, definitely 271 on average for Milka right now has been nuts. And I think he's just overall been the better player, expanding consistently. I don't know if he's been winning all these fights, but uh, he's in a pretty good position right now, at the very least. Starport's forced to lift and retreat from that position. Milka expanding again. I mean, he just he loses bases and he's like, no big deal. We're just going to make it again. That's how you win these games is you're just consistent in your rebuilding efforts. Oh, that Shadow Stride is so cool. And even with the Planetary Fortress and even with the scan. Oh, if you have seven DTs with Shadow Stride and plus three attack, you can take down a PF. That is the story there. That is the moral of that story. Colossus fighting more Marines and Marauders. Where did these guys come from? Barcode. Oh, the recall means dead Colossus, though. Yeah, man, you get home, but you lose Colossus. That is a problem. But losing this base is a major problem here, too. This means that Barcode... Okay, so he's got this income. He's replaced it. He's replaced this base or just relanded it after the DTs forced a lift off and killed a ton of, uh, ton of SCVs. 20 SCVs haven't killed Oh my gosh, the Shadow Shride DTs. The repair this time, though, I think is on time. And by that, I mean it's not on time. The Planetary Fortress is dead, but guess what? The Nexus goes down. That's number seven. That is the seventh Nexus. Two PFs down. These DTs are kind of having the time of their lives over here, but pushing in is Milka. He's brought SCVs with him. Are these for repair? What is he doing? Is he all inning? He recognizes this is a base. He needs to probably wipe out if he can. Liberator setting up, but again, the Tempest. Tempest need to focus that down. They do get the Liberator. That's amazing. Except a lot of ground army here. Out of Milka. Remember, that Colossus count is not as high as it could otherwise be. There's only the one. Big warping of Zealots. Once again, plus three armor. Zealot can handle a lot of bio, but the storms causing problems. Another <laughs> Nexus dies. The APM on display is through the roof right now. These players do not want to go home. They don't want to die. I mean... Probably playing this from home. I think this is a ladder game, but you know what I mean. This feels like championship level stuff. Maybe it was played on an online tournament. Who knows? 52 to 33 workers. Barcode is suddenly out. SCVs like crazy. He is up 79 or 92 to 79 army supply. It is continuing to make Marines, Marauders, and Medivacs. Got 23 Marines, 22 Marauders. All of them are 3 3. Bow, bow, bow. 
Barcode on the offensive once more. Oh, Disruptor shot. Wow, that was such great splitting. And the Disruptor dies. The Archon's in the front. Not where they want to be. They want Zealots buffering so that the Archons can do that splash damage versus Biological. Barcode is not really expanding behind this, which I'm worried about. This is really all he has. And he's trying to win with this. I don't know if it's working for him. Oh, killed the Disruptor before the Nova exploded. There's the scan. The DTs are so good at getting out of there once the scan comes up. Zealots just getting kited to within an inch of their lives. 205 APM versus 277 APM. Barcode is playing so fast right now. This has been such a high level game. This might be the PB best PBT I've cast in a really, really long time, you guys. This very well could get an epic tag. I know I've been using epic tags a lot lately, but you guys, if the game warrants it, I'm okay with it. Barcode floating an orbital command over to give him additional income. He recognizes he needs it. Ah, here comes Milka though. He's got his Zealots and his Stalkers and his Archons and his High Templar. And his Tempest and his everything here. Storm's on the right side, but oh, the top side flank. The Storm is there. The splits are okay. Backed into a corner. Milka has another recall, but again, how many units must die? Oh, the Colossus didn't even get caught in the recall there. Suddenly, it's 108 to 45 army supply. Barcode has the biggest lead he's had all match in army supply. It's 140 to 107 total supply. It's 58 workers for Milka, but not as much army. And I think that might be a mistake from him. He evacuates this base, recognizing he cannot save it. What clairvoyance from him. Recognizing this Nexus is going to die. I mean, that nine? Nine Nexuses down? When's the last time you saw a PVT with nine Nexuses killed? This might be 10. We might just see 10 right here if Milka doesn't want to defend it. He doesn't. He's not all that interested in defending it. He's coming on the right side, going for the flank attack, but everybody that comes over just gets destroyed by the Marines and the Marauders. The storm is doing pretty good here, but not enough. And the 10th Nexus does end up falling. 10 Nexuses down. 109 to 60 army supplied. Marines, Marauders, Metamax. No Liberators this time around. Dodging storm, fighting fully upgraded zealots okay almost fully upgraded zealots only plus two shields here but that is the winner anyway barcode is the victor in 32 minutes and 19 seconds i don't eat i don't i <sighs> Whew, i don't even know what to say about this game <laughs> Milka's APM is 403 right now. It's 403. He's down to 25 army supply. All he has left are two Zealots and three Tempest. And he recognizes he's done. He's outnumbered hugely. Uh, this is his income, I think, right here. This base is done as the army is right at the front door. I, I, Ten Nexuses. Two Planetary Fortresses. Um, 177 Marines. 111 Marauders. 116 Zealots. 12 Archons, 16 Tempest, 129 Stalkers, 14 Disruptors, 12 High Templar. Resources lost 73,000 for Milka and 62,000 for Barcode. <laughs> that was so hard fought by both of those players. I said this before, but this is how... I mean, the way that Milka was able to replace these Nexuses consistently. This one died twice, I want to say. This one died once, at least. Um, I think this one got killed, too. And he just... He replaced them. He replaced them instantly. Was able to shove back Barcode's army enough to replace the, the, the lost stuff here. I, I mean, I wish I had total number of resources mined and stuff. So that's, I mean, obviously the Protoss player probably mined more if he lost that many more, but wow, 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 wow. I mean, I think a big problem for Barcode there, he won, mind you, but when he was attacking up this way, I think he had it, he thought he had it won. He was attacking with all his Liberators against the Tempest and they all died. 
And from that point on, he didn't really have any Tempest or any Liberators. And I think that hurt him. But he was doing so much just with Marines and Marauders and Medivacs, man. It's a lot of Medivacs in the sky. How many Medivacs got killed in this game? Let's find out. Total of 20. So, I mean, yes, Milka was doing a great job killing them. But there's still 8 at the end of the game. And 3-3 three, three Marines and Marauders output a ton of damage. He had to dodge the storms as best as he could. He did a great job removing Disruptors from the play too. Just darting up on them, going through Purification Novas sometimes to get those off. And that was just amazing. That was fantastic display. I, uh... Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Not kidding. The person who sent me this, the barcode here, said, The best game I have played in months. And I, I believe them. I believe them at this stage. Hmm. All right. Well, by golly, that's going to be it for me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void and a special bonus Patreon edition. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. I really appreciate it. I feel the love from each and every one of you. I, just, I like doing extra stuff for you, too. So if you have any ideas of other things I can do for you as supporters of the channel, let me know in the comments or send me an email at falconpaladin at gmail.com or hit me up on Twitter at falconpaladin. Either way, I'm pretty easy to get hold of. But good times, man. Thanks for being here. And until next time, as always, thanks for watching and you take care of yourself.